Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I love when Marlene and I speak together. Between, you know how they say two heads are better than one, we really come up with all kind of crazy ideas to try to help a lot of you men and women. But because we've been there, I know I've been there, and I want to share with you how I play the fool. I want to share with you how desperate I was for love and, and how lonely and insecure and broken I was. When, when I was young, I saw myself as very unattractive. And I'm telling you, I was so desperate. I was so desperate. And I didn't, as much as my mother talked to me, about how a man will pursue you just to get between your legs. They may not have any interest in you. They may never remember your name. You may never mean anything to them, but as long as you're willing, they're game. And in spite of the fact that I knew this, I knew it, I was taught well. Miss Desperation did it anyway, because I was looking for love in all the wrong places. How many of you are looking for love? How many of you are looking for validation, for someone to say that you're worthy, that you're valuable? How many of you are? You walk around showing your tail and your, your boobs and you want them to say, oh, you're so pretty or, oh, you're so sexy. And you get off on the sexiness and, oh, my goodness, you're going to be the hottest thing, the hottest little tamale that man or that man or that man has ever had. They'll never forget you. They'll always come back for more. And guess what? You wrap them around your finger and win their heart and they'll marry you. Tank gonna happen, y'all. Tank gonna happen. They're gonna move from your nookie to the other one's nookie, to, and they might even interchange. Hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch your piggy by the toe. If he hollers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, I'll take that one. Uh, I'll play with you in a few hours, and you I'll hold off till next week. You're not that good. Oh, but this one got money. So I'm gonna get money with the honey. I mean, I'm telling you. You really think that you've got something, but you have nothing but a collection plate for the sperm. I'm trying to be real nice when I say that, because you know I want to say the P word, full of sperm. That's all you got is the P word, full of sperm and germs, hopefully not a baby, hopefully not a sexually transmitted disease come on now and shame 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 because they're laughing behind the door knowing they don't want you for nothing but when they need to get their little rocks off and you just going along with the okie do 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 because you'd rather have anything any little old messy thing, then no one at all. And if you allowed yourself time to get to know who you are, get to know how God can heal the holes in your soul, heal your broken and wounded heart, heal those hurts from the past, remove your insecurities altogether, you know what? Half of your sexuality, half of your attractiveness, half of your uh, appeal comes from your self-confidence. Do you know you're a woman? Do you know you're all that in a bag of chips? Not egocentrical. I, I mean, I don't mean it like that. I mean confidence. I know who I am. I don't have to bow. I don't have to beg. I don't have to stick my butt up in the air like I just don't care. I know who I am. I am a lady. I am a child of the Most High King. That makes me royalty. I'm not having an ego trip because I would be nothing without him. But because of him and because of his love, I am 
somebody and I will be treated as such. I will be respected as such. So if you want to run your pores all over something and you want to yank your little Peter out and work it, baby, you go buy your prostitute. Because, honey, I ain't the one. You got to have that kind of attitude. When a man knows you're not desperate and a man knows you value yourself, he'll work at it. Let me share something with you. One time, my, my husband, um, you know, the one I was married to 15 years, the one that just passed away a few years ago, that was a catch, let me tell you. I, I, that was the shortest 15 years I ever spent in my life. It felt like we had only been married six or seven years, maybe eight. We had a phenomenal relationship, you guys, because I had a real man. And as far as Milton was concerned, he had a real woman. That's what he said. So what I want to tell you is this comical story. When we were dating, okay, because sometimes what the dating process is you laying down some rules, you laying down some boundaries, baby, and you've got to do it in a way that they really get the point without you acting ugly to get the point across. One time, Milton wasn't feeling good. And he had invited me over for dinner. And we were sitting there clowning, talking smack, just back and forth. Like we always did. We banter back and forth and talk a lot of head, you know. Well, this particular time, he was getting a little snappy. And I was like, what's wrong with him? You know, kind of like a woman on a period. Yeah. So I'm sitting up here saying something's got him a little upset. So we clowned a little bit more. And then he came out with a... And I was like, whoa, Nelly, that was a dagger right there. And I don't play that. We're playing. If you got malice in your heart, don't aim it at me. So what I didn't say anything. My husband was 100% blind when we were dating as well. He lost his eyesight one year before he decided he wanted to date me. So he was already 100% blind. So I used his blindness to get a point across. I eased over and picked my purse up after he said what he said. I opened the door real quietly and shut it quietly and eased myself down the stairs and eased out the door. And I heard him say, Pat, Patricia, Patricia, Mark, he's talking to his son. Where's, uh, where's uh, Patricia? And Mark said, his son, Mark said, Oh, she left. Quiet. He heard me loud and clear without me having to say a word. I kept my integrity. I walked out with my character, with my head up, not hung low with my tail tucked between my legs. I walked out the victor without saying one mumbling word. And when I got home, I came home to a recording with him apologizing for having a mouth that night. He said, I should have told you. No, he didn't say I should have told you. He said, I had a headache and I, I didn't want to cancel our dinner, appoint, you know, fixing dinner for you. I didn't want to cancel that. But by the time you came, I was feeling so bad. All I wanted to do was dive into bed and I took it out on you and I'm sorry. So I gave it a few hours just to let it stew, you know, rub it in a little bit. And I called him back and I said, uh, you know, there's a word called communication. And if you didn't feel good, all I had to do was stay home. I could have gone out to eat dinner. I said, anytime you have an issue, I would rather you voice it than take it out on me. Because anytime something's taken out on me, I'm gone. Because I don't play that. I won't do that to you. And I don't want you doing it to me. So can we communicate from now on? Yes, we can. And you're right. I said, okay. Then it's over. And we had a beautiful relationship I meant the problem was over, no more anger. We had a beautiful relationship because 
If I had an issue, I'd share it without beating him upside the head with it, without slapping him in his face with my tongue, without cutting him down with my words. If he had issues that he had to talk to me about, we sat and talked, matter of fact. Just like somebody said, you know, looks like the tire's coming down on some air. We got to put some air in the tire. Well, that was the way we dealt with things that we needed to deal with. Very matter of fact. And as a result of not attacking one another, not blaming one another, not belittling one another, we didn't have to defend ourselves. We didn't have to get into an argument and have the last word and outdo what you said about me. I'm going to top you by putting you in your place. And No, we didn't have to do that. It wasn't even necessary. He had integrity. He had character. And brother man was shown enough mature. And I had the same. And that's how we handled things. And that's why we had such a rich marriage. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of laughs, and a world full of love and respect. It really makes a difference in your marriages. It also makes a difference in your relationships. If you don't lay the groundwork when you're dating and you don't walk, they will walk all over you. All you got to do is Keep that in mind, male or female. If you don't walk away when you need to, they will walk all over you. Walk, baby, with your head up high. There's no reason for you to apologize when they're the ones who are wrong. God bless you.